I have a huge problem when it comes to mountain biking shoes and pedals. And I'm gonna talk about it in this video. I'm gonna solve it, all thanks to my guys at One Up Components. I have these shoes. They are the Shimano AM7s. They're great. But in the winter, there's a better shoe. The Shimano MN7. As you can see, it's got Gore-Tex all over it. It's water sealed. And when things get wet, these mean my feet are gonna stay dry. But I didn't use them. Why didn't I use them? because changing cleats over to new shoes or replacing cleats and getting that same foot position is just really annoying. And I think I've come up with the perfect solution. And this is the world exclusive of the No Faf 5000. Let me walk you through it. We've got things that move side to side over here. And this, there's frame in here that, I mean, it's cardboard. This isn't, this is a prototype. And under here we have a little frame shape Mold? Mount? Mold. Choose any of the words above. The principle is that I'm gonna be able to have this, fix it onto the position where my cleat is, lock it down here, lock it down here, lock it down in the middle. And then I'm gonna take this off, get my new shoe, put it on, and then I'll be able to just tighten up my cleat then and there, and my cleat should be in the exact same position. It's a pretty simple concept. I don't understand why it hasn't been done before. Okay, Ergon have apparently made this already, but it's terrible. In fact, Isaac put up a picture of how terrible this thing is. This is the NoFab 5000 is the future of transferring cleats onto a new pair of shoes. We're gonna go to 1UP HQ here in Squamish, BC and go and meet John Staples. Now, John is a bit of a genius in the mountain biking world. Let me show you some of the things that he's been a part of. You want a tool on your bike? EDC, everyday carry. It's got freaking everything. Look, tire lever, Allen keys. What more do you want? Tire plug in there, John Staples. So we're in good hands. John Staples is the man to bring this into life. He can do it. Wait, something I've completely forgotten to mention. Joel, team slow and awkward gloves are now available. Click the link in the description below. You can go and pick them up today. Also, if you buy a pair of gloves and a jersey, you actually get a bit of a discount. Check this out. Huh? How good are they? Okay, available now, right, let's really go. John. Yes. Let me present to you the problem. And then just screw in the cleats and I've got the exact same position. Okay, what are you using as a datum for, for your position? Like, do these wait, wrap wait, wait. around? What's a datum? <laughs> uh, a point of reference, something that's the same on both shoes that allows you okay. to so I foresee, position it. I foresee that I can lock in the, the, this position, okay. and then lock in this position. Okay, but using what? Using the front and the rear of the shoe? Using the, the top and the widest point. Okay, what if the widest point is different between the two shoes? What if one's like a clip, like a, a more streamlined clip versus oh. like a flat shoe with a clip on it? Well, how would you solve that problem? <laughs> I don't know, this is your, <laughs> your pitch. <laughs> Some kind of point of reference that may be through the center of the cleat. Okay. Like, do you know what I mean? This distance and then this distance that you can then put onto the new shoe. You know, the available space that you can put a cleat can't deviate that much between different shoes. All right, what do we got here? 40.6. Versus 40.9, pretty damn similar. Do you think this idea's got legs? I think it's possible to make. I'm not sure it has legs. I'll take it. <laughs> okay, what's, what's step one? Where do we begin? Uh, step one, I would probably cat up a rough mock-up of your shoe. Should we do that? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Can you rotate the cleat and the holder on that diagram? Yeah, so this is just going to sit on top of your cleat, wherever your cleat is. Yeah. Thank you for that. Paul, oh, that was very helpful. Isaac, better not cut that bit out. If you wanted to refer to my prototype at any time, John, it's right there. Just, <laughs> just saying. It's fine there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I joke, but your prototype did give me the inspiration. You can keep that in too. Yes. All right, so we've got our STL file loaded up in our 3D printer. Uh, we're gonna print it. It's gonna, it says it's gonna take about 43 minutes. So here we go. 
so then after you left, I decided I would go for something a little bit more polished looking. So this is the official NoFaf 5000. Wow. With a, with a toe measure. So the way this guy works is you would drop it on. The cleat picks up into these four posts. Mm -hmm. So this top piece, all it does is locate where the cleat is. And then you can move these chevrons and this toe block so that the toe kind of picks up right in the middle of your left foot in this case. And then we're gonna tighten that whole thing down. What that's doing is it's identifying where it currently sits on your shoe. So then you can pull this guy off. And then when you drop that fresh cleat onto your new shoe and line the toe box up, and then... You there you go. <laughs> well, we'll see. You should try it on a few shoes. Does that look like it's in roughly the same spot? We've got different shoes, but it would be. I'd yeah, say so. that looks pretty spot on. John, you've done it. There you go. Do you realize you just changed mountain biking? Today? <laughs> I don't know about that. Oh, this is only a left foot prototype right now. Because because the, because your toe is always offset, oh, um, yeah. I do have in my head a way to make it ambidextrous. Um, but that'll be V4. Well, we have the left foot prototype. All right. We'll go and test this. Great. So now we've got the prototype. The next step is to obviously test it, but also see if we can get any media coverage of it. Because I think we need media coverage first before we start trying to take it and sell it in stores. Just gonna call someone. No calls from media yet, Joel. While we wait for that, we're gonna do my test. I know, like the back of my hand, how this left shoe should feel. So, we're gonna see if we can live the dream and get it on this left shoe. Okay, it's on the cleat, perfect. Right, we have loose. Tighten it down. I mean, I think it's pretty close. Put it on, put it on. Okay, this is it. Quite nervous. It's the same. Joel, it's exactly the same. That's unreal. It's, come and look. I have it just so it won't touch the crank and it feels just naturally comfortable. Joel, I think he's done it. We gotta get this thing tested. Oh. <laughs> it worked. I am now outside the first bike shop that we're going to try and pitch the NoFaf 5000 to. Hey Bryn. Hello Brett. I've made a revolutionary bike product and I would like to pitch the shop yeah. on if this is the kind of thing they would buy. Do you ride clips? No. Yes. You do? Uh, of course. What yeah. kind of clips? I ride Shimano's. Bryn, do you ride clips? Shimano's. Shimano's. Okay, guys. You have your favorite AM45 shoe. God, I hate changing the cleat position. The No Faf 5000. Okay, it's now secure. That's a nice the position. Fit. Then what we do is we just tighten down all This was actually designed by John Staples. Concept yeah. by me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not bad. I can see a use for it. I spend a lot of time to make sure it's uh, exactly how it was before. Not so much if it was changing shoe models, but same shoe to same shoe, which I do every year. You're on you're onto something. I don't know how much money you're gonna make. How much would you buy pay you for this? $29.95. What do you reckon, Ben? Maybe a little less than that. I feel like 20, I'd be like, yeah. So do you think this is something that someone would have at home? Or do you think this is something you would have in the uh, workshop? At home. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought this would be like, oh, only a bike shop. No, don't sell yourself short. Sell to the millions. Don't sell to five bike shops. How many okay. units have you got that we can buy today? How many do you want to buy? I want to invest. Let's get Nick. Nick! No, really? Yes, yeah, I'll, I'll make the uh, decisions That's financially. Fine. I feel like I'm being calmed off by the manager. You yeah, know what I mean? well, there's important meetings going on about where our bikes are, so. Well, there's no giants here, that's your first problem. This actually started out as a joke, but now I'm thinking maybe it's actually real. It's definitely not the worst idea, but I don't think it's a moneymaker. So, of course, it went pretty well, and now I'm at Republic, my number one favorite shop. I've brought the NoFaf 5000 and some shoes. And we're going to go in and see Nate. And most importantly, he also has the direct competitor to the NoFaf 5000, the Aegon one. Okay, Nate, this is it. The NoFaf 5000, a revolution in SBD fitting technology. I've actually brought you a couple of shoes to demonstrate it. Oh, bugger. No, that's fine, is it? Oh, no! We can save it. We can salvage it. Prototype, prototype, prototype. What do you think? as a product to sell in the bike shop. From my experience, this kind of setup usually falls to the salesperson or mechanic to, to do as part of a shoe sale. It would be something that shops would buy, maybe not the rider. Most customers just want to buy a pair of shoes, have it set up and ride out the door. How much time would, could this save a bike shop? Hours, if you're considering like 
the alternative is eyeballing it and letting the customer go out and try it and come back and, you know, several visits into the shop. Have you used this thing before? Yes. How would you compare that tool to the one I've just brought you? You do need to like have a tabletop. <laughs> it is big and clunky. Hey, I think I'm onto something. This seems like a better alternative. One of the main benefits of 3D printing is that I can put the link to the 3D print file in the description below. And if you have a 3D printer, you can actually print this product out for yourself. And to test that this works, I have messaged my good friend Joe from the channel Trail Features. He has a 3D printer and he's given it a go to print this out. So we're going to call him now and see how he got on. Oh, hi, Joe. Hey, Paul. Okay, Joe, I've sent you this file. As you made me aware, this version that I have in my hand was made on a resin printer and you have a filament printer. But because you have a very big brain, you've actually been able to create a file that will work for a filament printer now. Yep. Perfect. So show me how you got on. How did the parts come out? Uh, I'm pretty happy with them. Yeah, pretty clean, pretty strong. Yeah, I think they're good to uh, get put together. Okay. You know what, Joe? This is meant to be left shoe specific, but I've just realized if I undo this and then I just flipped it around, that would work for the right shoe. Yeah, you would just want to make sure that there's a channel on uh, both sides there. That's pretty easy to fix. Uh, oh, wow. How did I not see that until just this moment? And now that would, that would totally work for the right shoe. We're filming this not in the order that you're watching this video. So this revelation has come at the end. Damn it. <laughs> All right. All right, so uh, how does it look? I think I hey, got it. Hey, it looks great. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, now time for the fun bit, Joe. Uh, go and grab your Shimano shoes with the SPD cleat and uh, I'll show you how it works. Uh, you didn't see that text I sent you? What text? I only ride flats. So another thing I need is press. And luckily in Squamish, there are a couple of people that contribute to some of the websites. First of all, we're gonna go and see Veronica who contributes to NSMB. And she's got some new shoes that need to have cleats put on. So this is kind of the perfect time to test it out. This is Veronica. Veronica, this is the NoFaf 5000. Ooh. All right. What do you think so far? It's so intuitive. I know exactly what it does just by looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the idea to test it out. Veronica has already got her new shoes here with the new cleats on, but here are her old shoes with her favorite cleat position. So we're gonna see if that tool can do better than humans. Okay, now pull that off. Beautiful. Now. Just put it back on. Okay, now make sure it's all kind of firmly in the same place, like the toe is down and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. This little guy's in there. Yeah. There we go. Okay, right. Whew. This is a big moment. You are the second person ever to see if this test, is, test works. Okay, pop it on your bike. Let's see how it works. They feel correct. They feel correct? They feel correct. <gasps> we did it. Yay. In your professional opinion, Veronica, First impressions of the NoFa 5000? Uh, it works. And that did not take very long, did it, to get, replicate that cleat position? No, no. Easier than getting the measuring tape out. Yes. How much would you pay for one? Oof. First of all, what material will it be made of in the future? Uh, I think aluminium would probably be the best. I'd say we're probably hitting that, like, $30 range. Ooh. You would pay $30 and be like, hey, I'm happy about this purchase. Yeah, I would tuck that into the toolbox for future use, for sure. So we got the approval from Veronica. I actually forgot to ask her if it's something she would write about for NSMB. But now we've got Sarah from Pinkbike. She's someone I really respect. She's the North American content manager, but she also does lots of reviews. She was actually one of the people that reviewed this very bike, the Giant Trans X3. So I'm gonna pitch her on this. I'm gonna see if she likes it, and then I'll see if this is something that she would write about, which is what every new product really needs. Some good press. Sarah, we're gonna have you test the NoFaf 5000. NoFaf, uh, it's even got his name on there, NoFaf 5000. Oh yeah, it's pretty legit. Is it annoying having to change cleats? Yeah, yeah, it's always like you put it on and then it's not always perfect. Let's see how you go. I really respect your opinion. 
And then at the end, I would I want to know if this is something that you would actually like review on the website, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> Sarah's laughing her head off. I you, yeah, it's, it's, we have a we found a problem. <laughs> so, it's kind of a major one. <laughs> I mean, major is a strong word, but the non Shimano shoes that she's brought over. Because you know there are other brands of shoes that people might want to try. So we have. <laughs> no, no, only Shimano. Doesn't really fit properly. No, it's also it doesn't go far enough back. Pretty much, you designed a tool for yourself. So that you can move your your cleats. They were, we from tried the them on different same pair of shoes. So because each toe is kind of a different shape. Yeah. What do you reckon? Well, it's almost like you need this part here to be a little bit flexible, so that you can like mold it. Okay, am I putting it like this, or am I putting it like this? Mm. <laughs> it, it would like connect the two. Yeah, because then we've got a uh, hypotenuse going across here. Geometry, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> but let's wrap things up here. If this had worked and it had replicated it on all these shoes, is this the kind of thing that you would write about? I think if it worked, it's interesting. I think we could write about it if it was if, if it worked and it actually was no fat. Five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's not a thing a ton of people are going to buy, I don't think. Because people change their cleats so infrequently. I think this would be the kind of thing that a shop would have. So maybe it's like a really nice two hundred dollar tool instead of a two hundred twenty five dollar tool. <clears throat> if, was... if, only, if you're only selling it to shops, you've just like cut your margins by like ten thousand. <laughs> so unfortunately, punters, the no fat five thousand hasn't been a complete success as Sarah has just debunked a couple of its shortcomings. However, I put links to the original files of the NoFab 5000. Maybe someone watching has some ideas of how to modify it, and maybe I'll be making some changes to this as well. So hit the subscribe button if you aren't subscribed already to catch my future uploads. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like button, but most importantly, watch it twice. Cheers, punters. I'll see you next time.